I'm Brittany Lewis with Forbes Breaking News. On Thursday, Education Secretary Miguel Cardona testified before the House Education and Labor Committee. He opened up his speech by saying how ashamed he is that the U.S. is becoming desensitized to the murder of children. He also believes that the country must do better to protect students. Cardona then outlined President Biden's proposed investments for education in the fiscal year 2023. Here's the Secretary's full testimony. Thank you, uh, Chairman Scott, Ranking Member Fox, members of this distinguished committee. Good afternoon and thank you. I'll do my best to answer questions on the budget, to tell you that this proposal will be our best tool to address inequities, the best tool to provide pathways to college and to help our country recover from the pandemic. But I'd be failing you as Secretary of Education if I didn't tell you how ashamed I am that we as a country are becoming desensitized to the murder of children. I'd be failing you as a Secretary of Education if I didn't use this platform to say that students and teachers and school leaders are scared. That after Columbine, after Sandy Hook, after Parkland, after each of these and the many other massacres, we as educators did our best to look parents in the eyes and assure them that we'll do everything to protect their babies. After each of these massacres, we've held staff trainings active shooter drills. We've numbered our windows for easier access for law enforcement. We've improved online early detection screening tools, and we've secured our entrances and perimeters. That is no match for what we're up against. That was no match for Irma Garcia and no match for Eva Mireles and those 19 beautiful souls. Educators across the country have and would give their lives to protect children, but damn it, that's not enough. Unless you've gone to a funeral of a child, you'll never know. We can do better and we must do better. Para las familias de Texas, te acompaño en sus sentimientos y estar aquí luchando para ustedes. There are no words. As parents, protecting our children is more important than anything else. As an educator, helping children grow and thrive, that's our calling. But we need help and we need help now. I'll transition to the purpose of this hearing, but don't think for one second that my focus today and the focus of all of my team at the United States Department of Education is on anything but how we can better serve the students of Uvalde, Texas and their grieving families. Let's not normalize this. Let's use every ounce of influence that we have to get something done to help prevent this from happening again. The time for thoughts and prayers alone is over. We need action. Americans are looking to us to solve difficult problems. We should be humbled by this opportunity to make a more perfect union. We need to do better. Our kids deserve better. Let's find a path forward. Today's hearing is about more than President Biden's proposed investments for education in the fiscal year 2023. It's about the needs of our students and how we can meet them if we do work together. The priorities in this budget reflect what I've learned visiting 32 states across America. I visited small towns, affluent suburbs, urban and rural communities, including tribal communities. Addressing opportunity and achievement gaps that were made worse in the pandemic is more important now than ever. Let's close opportunity gaps by investing in our Title I schools. This is the best tool we have for reducing inequities between underfunded schools and their wealthier counterparts. Let's also invest in full service community schools, which provide high poverty communities easier access to services for health, for nutrition, for enrichment, adult education, and much more. In a recent visit to New Mexico, I met with students struggling with anxiety and depression, with trauma, from losing parents amid the pandemic. Our children are hurting. Anxiety and depression have doubled among youth. Teen suicide rates are on the rise. Let's invest a billion dollars in hiring staff and building their skill sets to support students' mental health needs so they can be their best in their classroom. I've met with principals and superintendents in red states and in blue states trying to fill vacancies so teachers could spend more time supporting the individualized needs that we know our student, students have. They need help. 
We are proposing $350 million for recruiting and retaining teachers. The profession is in crisis and we have a solution. I travel the country listening to parents, to students and families. Families are concerned with recovery. They're concerned with their kids' reading level in school. They're concerned with getting back to school and not letting politics divide the classroom. Our parents want their children to learn. The American Rescue Plan got us this far. We went from 46% of our schools fully open when the, pan, when the plan passed to over 99% of our schools fully open now. With your investments, let's build more inclusive, affordable pathways to higher education and rewarding careers for all of our students. Our budget calls for investments in community colleges, historically black colleges and university, Hispanic serving institutions, tribal colleges, and other inclusive institutions. And let's increase Pell by $1,775 for 23 so that more kids can get to college across America. We're proposing $200 million for career-connected learning. So more underserved students graduate high school with the industry credentials and the college credits that they need. High school students across the country need more options. We have a plan. Look, education gave me the tools to achieve the American dream. I grew up in a blue collar community of Meriden. I only had what my public schools offered me. I attended a Title I school and graduated from a technical high school. I became a first gen college student. I'm a bilingual certified educator who benefited from quality teacher preparation and professional development. I am a product of the investments in this budget. Education brought the promise of this country alive for me. We must renew that promise for today's students and those to come. And for the last two years, we were tested in ways we could never imagine before. We persevered through with a sense of urgency, collaboration at the local level, and a focus on our students. We are now challenged in a different way. We must work together to protect children with a greater sense of urgency and collaboration at the federal level. Our students are watching. Let's not let them down. Thank you.